called a balanced approach. Now by that I mean a balanced approach between the gifts of the Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit. Now pastor and author John Bevere has said that the two biggest extremes in the body of Christ are practicing the fruit of the Spirit at the expense of the gifts of the Spirit and practicing the gifts of the Spirit at the expense of the fruit. Now while I would disagree with John in that these are the two biggest extremes in the body of Christ, I would agree with him to the extent that these are important extremes that need to be addressed and dealt with. And so I'm going to do that this morning. What we're going to do is go through um, a few scriptures concerning both the gifts and fruit of the Spirit, how we need both, and how we can apply a balance to our life in Christ. So with that said, please turn with me in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians 12, um, where we um, find the most um, detail about the gifts of the Spirit. Everyone got it? Now about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed, or in some versions, ignorant. You know that when you were pagans, somehow or another, you were influenced and led astray by mute idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God can say, Jesus be cursed. No one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service. But the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in them, in all of them, it is the same God at work. Now, to each one of the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given um, through the Spirit a message of wisdom, to another a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit, to another faith of the same Spirit, to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between ones, and yet to another speaking in different kinds of tongues and still to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are work of one and the same Spirit, and he, and he distributes them just as he determines. Amen, amen. Amen. Here. Oh yeah, and I just want to mention uh, briefly, um, 1 Corinthians 14 says, Follow the way of love, eagerly desire the spiritual gifts, and especially prophecy. Now what I want to do for a moment is to, for us to pay attention to two primary things. First of all, Paul instructed the church in Corinth not to be ignorant or uninformed of the gifts of the Spirit. Secondly, as we have just read from 1 Corinthians 14, 1, he tells them to eagerly desire the spiritual gifts, especially prophecy, because of how much the gift of prophecy edifies, built up, and encourages the body of Christ. Now, um, before I continue, I think it's worth mentioning that in my background, like um, the theology of Israel, um, I have had no tra training, teaching, and no preaching um, from my pastors growing up concerning the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Um, and when I was exposed to them for the first time, um, I was, to say the least, very left very confused. I'll explain that for a minute. Um, the first time I was exp exposed to the gifts of the Spirit, the first gift of the Spirit I was exposed to was speaking in tongues. But I was confused because there was no um, explanation, no teaching, and no interpretation of the tongue. So I was left, to say the least, confused. The second time I was exposed um, to it was um, what was was called was explained to me as being slain in spirit. Now, if you don't know what that means, it simply means that someone lays their hand on you and prays for you, and under the power and anointing of the Holy Spirit, you basically fall to the floor and possibly uh, convulse. Now, I'm still kind of on the fence whether or not that's a biblical practice, just because I haven't come across anything in Scripture that actually backs it up. But I've heard that many people who are under the the influence of the power of the Holy Spirit have had such an activity happen or been on the, um, the, the participating part. So I'm just going to leave that to the, your discretion and the Holy Spirit's. Um, let's see here. But um, for, um, fortunately, 
in regards to the gift of speaking in tongues, as we have just read in 1 Corinthians 12, and Paul backs it up in other passages in, the, in his epistles, that this is certainly in, in, in undoubtedly a gift from the Holy Spirit. And um, furthermore, as I journey forward in my own faith walk with the Lord Jesus Christ, that this gift has been um, abundantly made clear to me that it is both biblical and it is something that actually does edify the person. However, like all gifts of the Holy Spirit, it is my personal belief, and I hope yours as well, that all the gifts of the Spirit, including this one, need to be tempered with wisdom and discretion. Now, by that I mean, I believe, I'm under the impression rather, that there is two types of setting that um, speaking in tongues is, um, how shall I say, acceptable. Um, the first is in a church um, body where it, the, the gifts of tongues is both permitted and practiced. And secondly, there is immediate interpretation of the, of the tongue that was spoken. Otherwise, as Paul says, it's, it's just useless babble. And actually, the person who's speaking in tongues doesn't even realize um, what they are, understand what they're saying. It's a direct heavenly language between them and the throne room uh, from God. Secondly, um, if it's going to be done um, without the interpretation of it, it should be done in solitude, um, individually, and not in front of other people, because I have, as, as, as I have just mentioned, if there is no interpretation, it leaves people who have witnessed this um, sp person speaking in tongues very confused. And moving on then, um, concerning the gift of prophecy, I now realize that I've had this gift my entire life, I just didn't know um, what it was called in biblical terms because, as I've mentioned, I have no teaching or training in the gifts of the Spirit. Now, I have um, the gift of prophecy in more specific terms under the umbrella of prophecy called what's um, words of knowledge, which simply means that the Holy Spirit gives me a word of knowledge about someone's life, um, some vocation, or something just to bless their heart. Now, it's a very broad spectrum under the umbrella of prophecy, but um, through people, that, um, including my own brother Andy, who teaches on the gift of prophecy weekly at his house, and um, places that I've been to, like um, Hamilton Christian Fellowship, and where Marissa and I now um, attend at um, Bethel Gospel on the Mountain, that uh, this gift of prophecy, and specifically in the words of knowledge, is incredibly biblically based, and it does edify, build up, and encourage. Now, there's two. There's a few things that I would call like a checklist concerning words of knowledge. The first is, um, does it glorify and exalt Jesus? If it doesn't do that, you should just dismiss it immediately. Secondly, does it encourage, and, and is the word confirmed, and um, the person's heart? Like when there's a word of knowledge, um, the first thing that should happen in the person that's receiving it, it should be, it should it should it should be almost like a ah like, like you know it encourages right. It's an immediate thing. And lastly, just because you have immediately received a word of knowledge from the Holy Spirit, doesn't mean that the word should be released immediately upon receiving it. Sometimes words of knowledge can take days, weeks, months, or even years before that word of knowledge comes to pass or even be spoken to the person so as with like i said the, all the gifts of the spirit there needs to be a lot of wisdom and discernment and balances and checks all right then um now that we have discussed and I've, and as i've given a few examples from my own life concerning the gifts of the spirit let's now turn our bibles to um galatians 5 verses 22 to 26 where we find the passage concerning the fruit of the Spirit. But if the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. 
Now, a good friend of mine told me a few months ago that the fruit, or sorry, the gifts strengthen the fruit, which of course he meant that the gifts of the Spirit strengthen the fruit of the Spirit. Now, this came up some time ago as I was telling him, I told him that um, one day as I was driving to work, I was speaking in tongues. You know, like I said, I was on my own in solitude, there was no other people around. So, and the more I spoke in tongues, the more joy rose up in my, in my spirit. So this is a good example of, as he said, this is a, a gift, which is, which is speaking in tongues, which strengthened the fruit, in this case, joy. Now, it's important for us to keep both the fruit and the gifts of the spirit in a balanced approach, so we can live in Christ without going from one extreme or the other. Let me bottom line it. Being the hands and feet of Christ, or practicing the fruit of the Spirit, apart from the gifts of the Spirit, is dangerously close to works-based religion. And operating the gifts of the Spirit, apart from the fruit of the Spirit, is spirituality detached from reality. However, when we operate in both the gifts and the fruit of the Spirit, a beautiful balance has been struck, and we have kindled the love joy and integrity that the Holy Spirit and Christ so beautifully want us to live in and become. Like, to quote Francis Chan, when the church lives in the Holy Spirit, it cannot help but be different, and the world cannot help but notice. And I can't help but reemphasize the importance of living in the Holy Spirit, applying both its gifts and his fruit, so that the Lord so mercifully and uh, abundantly provides for us, the church needs to be empowered, and lastly, what the world needs to see the church become, in order to find this Christ life attractive, either again or for the very first time. And it's my hope and prayer that in the time that I have had speaking with you this morning, that the simple message of applying in balance both the gifts and the fruit of the Spirit has been both helpful and beneficial and um, an encouragement to your spirits, hearts, and minds. In Jesus, amen. 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 amen.